Hallelujah. 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 It is as Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, wow. I wanted her to just continue. She was t Hallelujah. She was touching some very important things. I thought you fixed it. Glory be to God. Wow, 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 wow. How do you continue from there? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, this one seems to be working. Raise your hands and let's bless the name. Everyone stand up and let's talk to the Lord. Say, Father, teach me how to win spiritual warfares. Father, help me never to succumb to the lies of the devil and to his power. Lord, I proclaim, I put my trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my focus. He is my future. He is my strength. I refused to succumb to the powers of darkness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You can sit down, please. To God be the glory. Tell your neighbor, God is great. Tell your neighbor, God is great. Hallelujah. Can you fix this? God is great. God is great. He's a good God. He's a wonder God. He's just so great. Hallelujah. This one said, okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, she's a walking miracle. I was particularly very blessed and very moved by what happened. And um, I did not know the severity of it, that's why I did not cancel that visit. And, but I said to myself that I've cooked all my food, who will eat them? <laughs> <laughs> I should have called you. Somebody said I should have just called him. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it was great, it was powerful. And the pow I was going down on the grill, coming back, commanding demons. Go down on the grill, coming back, commanding demons. They saw, they saw it. I was going down, coming up. So I was, I was taking care of physical stuff, going up there to do spiritual work. Hallelujah. A combination of both. I'm telling you, you can switch like this into the spirit. Amen. And get into the battle. Get the job done. Come back, make your stake. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It can be done, it can be done, it can be done. But God did it. And the Lord wrought a mighty victory. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank God for a wife who believes the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We believe God. We'll try. All my being was telling me, don't take her to the hospital. It's a spiritual attack. Deal with it that way. But I want to tell you, I was shocked how, what a battle it was. The enemy is very wicked. I thought it would just be a one minute, two minute type of thing. The name of, but it was intense because they had targeted her for destruction. From there, one thing after the other would have been diagnosed. You understand? That's how the devil works. Oh, you have this. You have cancer. You have this. You have this. You have this. From there. If you don't know that's how the enemy works, he gets you to accept his verdict. Once you accept his verdict, then he begins his job in your life. And then you find yourself going from one chemo, one thing to after the other, and the rest, and the rest, and the rest. But that is not your portion. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord knew that I'll be teaching on deliverance from demons. And dealing with, because I discovered that the weekend... I cannot handle um, ministering deliverance 
just on Friday or Sunday because you need teaching. I don't just minister deliverance to people any longer like that. I m must teach first, then I minister deliverance. Because the goal is not just to get the demons out. The goal is to get the people keep the demons out. Amen? Amen. If people don't understand how to keep the demons out, the demons will come back anyway. When you deliver them, the demons will come back. So the strategy is to teach them how to be clean and how to be free. Tell your neighbor, you must know how to be free. And you must know how to stay free. Amen? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure to see you. Precious daughter, you're welcome. Hallelujah. I just could not ignore that. I did not see her before. <laughs> Amen. Are you excited for Jesus? Yes. Tell your neighbor, I love Jesus. Yes. Tell your neighbor, I love Jesus. Yes. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. And I want to say happy Father's Day to two precious people in my life. The first person is... Bishop Jack Mbang, he is my father who took care of me, brought me up, trained me in the ways of the Lord. I am what I am today because of this man. I'm sure he's watching. And thank you so much for the investment you made in my life, the financial investment, the spiritual investment. Thank you so much for the time you got me up early that we should pray. You got me up early and asked me, how, what have you meditated on God's word? Share your meditation with me. And I was trembling, sharing some of my small things I thought God had said. <laughs> thank you for helping me, correcting and helping me. Thank you for correcting some of my med funny med meditation on the word when you remember the day I said that, that the Lord has spoken to me that I should depart from his presence. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> I was a young convert. I was a young believer. And I was meditating on God's word and he said depart from my presence because yesterday you did not pray the way you did not pray as you had to pray. Can you imagine what the devil can do? And I was crying. The Lord has told me to depart from his presence. He looked at me. He laughed. I was shocked. He was laughing at somebody who was in pain. And he was laughing at us. I, I, I felt as though, I'm telling him now, I felt as though that was cruel. How can you be laughing when I'm crying? <laughs> but he turned to me. He said, God cannot speak to you contrary to his word. How many people seek God? You are seeking God and God is telling you to depart from his presence. He has promised that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He cannot ask you to depart from his presence. That is a false message. Thank God. I had someone who could hear God better and save me from disaster. Amen? So, Bishop Zhang Bang, thank you for building me up and for blessing and for transforming my life. May God bless you. Can you clap for this man of God? Hallelujah. And I want to say thank you also to Bishop Mbafo. Can you clap for this great man? Thank you for being a father, a great father indeed. You have encouraged me. You have built me up. You have pushed me. You have strengthened me. And you have really shown that you love me. I am very grateful to you and I thank God for you. May God bless you. Thank you for being a wonderful father. I remain very grateful to you. May God continue to bless you and use you and make you and cause you to be used by God to transform other lives and transform and transform the nations for God. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Shout a shout of victory. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the next two weeks will be weeks of deliverance. And I, I want to tell the youth pastor, do something for Saturday. We need a short one-hour meeting on Saturday. Not this Saturday. The next, the coming, yeah, the coming Saturday, isn't it? We have the cookout. Yes. But I, I want a meeting before the cookout in order to complete what I need to complete. Because on that Sunday, there will be massive deliverance in this place. Amen? So that on Sunday we concentrate on setting people free. You get it? Okay. Praise the Lord. Now, I had to say it so that everybody gets it. I could have told him privately, but he's talking to him and also giving an announcement. 
James 1, James 1, 13 to 16. Deliverance from demons. Are you there? One, two, three, go. Let's read. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Amen. God cannot be tempted by evil. It means God cannot tempt you to do evil. Because evil doesn't exist with him. It does not, he ca this, it doesn't exist with him, so he cannot tempt you to do evil. And how does evil start? I want you to go to verse 14. Let's read. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Put, new, put, put King James. Desire is good, but I want the word lost. Let's go. Let's read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away by his own loss and enticed. Amen? Loss. How does loss come? I'm talking about the power of the imagination. The imagination is something in man that is so powerful that it can lead to evil or it can lead to good. What you imagine determines your future. What you imagine determines who you become. Loss is not a physical thing. Loss is imagination. You imagine or see yourself with a woman that is not your wife. You imagine and desire someone who is not your wife. Lost. It, it, it starts where? In the mind. Say with me in the mind. Say with me in the mind. So lost is in the imagination. And I will draw your attention to something about the imagination when it comes to deliverance. Because when you are delivered there, a lot of things in area, many areas of your life will be free. Because the battle is in the imagination. And the world has captured that secret. That's why they are filling the whole world with pictures. So that the moment you see it, you, it captures your mind. The battle is to, to, to capture your mind. They want to capture your mind so that you think like them. Sin begins in the imagination. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own laws and enticed. Listen carefully. Verse 15 says what? Let's go. It says one, two, three, go. Then when laws had conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth dead. Are you getting it? It starts where? In the imag shouting imagination. It begins there. That's where sin begins. Almost everything in life begins there. Do you know that you were, you were in God's imagination? God imagined to create somebody with your nose trees, with everything that looked like you. He thought of you. Hallelujah. He looked and he felt that I need to produce somebody that is like Jasmine. As beautiful as Jasmine. I need to set that person up. That's why the Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. You came from him. You were sent from him. You were created from him. He sent you from him. That's why you are uniquely created. Because God does not create duplicates. He makes original. I say you are an original. Hallelujah. You are an original. Say with me, I am an, an original. He said, then lost when... Then when loss had conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. It did not first begin with sin, it begins with imagination. Everything starts there. You may just imagine that Sister Kashiku does not like you. I don't want to call names. <laughs> if you are Kashiku, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my favorite name. 
You may just imagine that Sister Kashiko does not like you. And I want to tell you, you will act towards her with that imagination. You will become strange around her. Very defensive around her. The moment something happens, you say, I know. I knew this is what is happening. This sister doesn't like me. Because your imagination is all filled with the fact that she does not love you. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. It begins there. And the imagination is so strong, so powerful. And in verse 16, the Bible says, well, let's just conclude in verse 16 in this verse. Do not err, uh, my beloved brethren. Hallelujah. Can you put the new King James? Do not be deceived. That's what I wanted. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. So God is telling you, be not, be not deceived because your imagination has more power than what you think. If you kill it when it is still lost, it will not be put into action. All adultery, all fornication, all everything began here in the mind. It's in the imagination. That's where the battle is. That's why the Bible says, think on the things that are pure, on the things that are lovely, on the things that are of good report. Because when you think on those things, you don't give room for the enemy to invade your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. You refuse to think that somebody meant evil. Amen. Amen. Tell never don't think evil about me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Say the power of imagination. Imagination is so strong that God had to act. In Genesis 11 verse 5 and 6, the Bible says what? Let's go to Genesis 11 verse 5 and 6. Let's read. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Continue. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to, to, to do. Now, nothing they propose. No, please change it to King James. That's the problem with versions. They try to change powerful words that should not be changed. Let's, let's read. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Even God recognized the power of the imagination. He said, nothing will stop them because they have imagined it. Are you getting a vision is simply imagination. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of a vision. It means without the right imagination, you will perish. So listen, what you think and what you plan determines your future. What is your sanctified imagination doing? I believe this message will be one of the best messages of your life if you take it seriously. Listen carefully. Miracles are in the imagination. That's why the Lord says, if thou shalt say unto this mountain, without remove and without cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that whatsoever you say shall come to pass, you shall have what you say. How do you believe it? You believe it in your imagination. You imagine yourself healed. I was telling my wife the other day as we were walking on this thing, I said, darling, see yourself delivered. See yourself healed. Stop looking at the pain. Just see pain-free body. What you see is what you get. Because faith is looking on that which you know is done in the spirit. Hallelujah. Even though in the physical, it is still there. But in the spirit, you are healed. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Shout it, thank you, Jesus. Amen. 
So God saw that they could not be restrained. He had to divide. He had to scatter them. Because what they have imagined to do will come to pass. Why? God created them with an imagination that he knew the power of it. That's why he had to intervene. Are you getting it? God knew you were created to be like him. And he has given you an imagination so powerful, so little, that he had to stop you before you become something else. God himself knows the power within you. The power within you is great. It's so powerful that if you imagine something, God says, this one is close to getting it done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, neighbor, I'm close. I'm close to getting things happen, to getting things done. Hallelujah. Imagine your pain gone. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Shout a shout of victory. Shout a shout of victory. So therefore now let's go. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3. This will help you. This will really bless you. It says, let's read together. But I fear, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Amen. God is saying the battle is not here in the physical body. Your problem with loss or immorality is not your body. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your problem with envy and jealousy is not your body. Somebody once told me, I feel like you just take this body. Because this body just wants to sin. No. It's not your body. It's your imagination. It's in your mind. The body will not jump at sin. <laughs> Are you getting it? Yes. Your war is not against the flesh. Amen. There's something inside of you that comes from your soul, your imagination, and what you think and what you focus on that determines who you become. It says, verse, verse 4. Let's continue. What, one, two, three, go. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Are you getting it? They are not carnal's weapons, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. Say we meet for the pulling down of strongholds. Many of the strongholds we struggle with are not in the physical. They are spiritual. They are imaginations and things we have built up in a way that they have become part of us. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your thoughts have become your bondage. The things you have imagined and you have seen Are you getting it? Yeah. And every temptation is based on that. I've never had the temptation to smoke. You know why? There, it has never existed in my imagination. I've never had the temptation to pick a cigarette. <laughs> Are you getting it? In my imagination, it doesn't exist. So the, what, what the devil does is to feed you with things. Watch a movie consistently about adultery and you find yourself imagining adultery. What do you get? Garbage in, garbage out. The, 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 the things you receive, it will become part of you. So when you are watching that movie and you are enjoying it and say, and you see adultery there and you see all type of sin there and then you sleep and still say a woman is following you (laughs) 
<laughs> you get those. Oh Lord, I need prayers. This house, this house needs prayers. Maybe it's this bed. It's you. Because it's, a, it's based on the things you have fed yourself with. You have touched your imagination with things you should not. And therefore you are being affected by what you should have filled yourself with. The battle is in there. In the thoughts and imagination. Pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds? Let's go to verse 5. It says what? Casting down imaginations. Are you getting it? Yes. Pulling down strongholds. That battle are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And which are these strongholds? Casting down imagination. Underline the word cast. Listen to what the Bible says. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. So God is saying the first demon to deal with is the demons of imaginations. The things in the mind that Satan has made to become strongholds. Because as long as we get those demons out and your mind is not cleansed, it will pull them back. The battle is in the mind. What you think, what you feel in the mind is where the battle is. Casting down imaginations. Oh, may God open the eyes of his children today. May God open the eyes of his children today. Hallelujah. If you need a child, begin to imagine yourself with children. Begin to imagine yourself going to, the, to have. Begin to imagine yourself. I don't care how old you are. You may be, you may, you may be Sarah. God of the Old Testament is still God in the New Testament. He is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Stop looking at the clock because in heaven clocks don't exist. Hallelujah. God is an eternal God. He deals with eternity. He doesn't deal with human time. And a human clock. What are you telling me? Up to now I'm not married. I'm over 30. When will I have children? You can even be married at 20 and yet children don't come. So children coming is grace. So depend on grace. Stand on the word and say it shall not fail. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. Imagination. Do what do you imagine? As long as you sleep, get up. Imagine yourself childless. So shall you be. God forbid. Thank you. You must imagine yourself having the children. You must have, imagine yourself having the children you want. You must imagine. You must see yourself that way before it comes to pass. Casting down imagination. Say with me. Casting down imagination. So you must cast it down. And every. Let's continue. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Wow. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Where? Well, they're all in the mind. Are you getting this? The battle is in the mind. And it continues. And bringing into captivity every thought. Listen, in everything, there's no mention of anything physical. It's all invisible forces. That deals with battles in your mind. Every child who struggles in school starts here. He starts feeling that much is tough. We are training our son. Man, I say, man, don't say it because once you say it and keep it in your mind, that mad or that that English will flee from you. Like, I forgive you, brother. Yeah. Who we'll asked you to remember that? <laughs> he said, like French to you. Lydia understand this. <laughs> and Lydia, you get it. <laughs> like French to you. The battle of it. French fled from me like I be you would chase someone. <laughs> because I hated French. And I said, I don't like French. Big mistake. Because for the sake of the gospel, you must know it. 
Wait, Cynthia. The father was interpreting me. And I, he made mistakes. I just continue as though nothing has happened. People were shouting in the crowd that he had said the total opposite. Because I did not know the French word to correct him. May God help me. And God began helping me. I started repenting. Now I can help. Ask my wife. The last time I, Pastor Michel helped, I, when he made a mistake, I'll repeat it. And, because I may not know the right French word, but I know that was wrong. <laughs> But it is because I hated it in my mind and in my imagination. I did not want French. And French also fled from me. So in school, what you hate and avoid will also avoid you. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity. Listen carefully. Bringing into? Captivity. Shout it. Captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ because the thought naturally will not obey Christ. You must bring the thoughts to obey Christ and you must bring them into captivity. It says bringing every thought every, and, and bringing into captivity every thought. It means you must capture it. You capture the thought before the thought capture you. It is who win that fight. You capture it when the thought is telling you something horrible. When the thought is trying to tell you something bad, kill it before it kills you. Hallelujah. Are you now seeing where the battle is? Because we sometimes minister deliverance to people and yet they don't understand how to fight the battles. If you don't see how, where the battle is, you cannot keep yourself clean. When the thought comes to you against Ese, and say, make a statement against Ese, what do you do? Kill it. <laughs> She's asking for the blessings. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you say, a negative thought, kill it. A good thought, encourage it. Hallelujah. Bring every evil thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Every thought asks, is this thought obeying Jesus or not? You have a thought about your husband? The lady told me my husband is the devil. It did not happen yet, so don't be looking at each other. <laughs> Happened somewhere else. My husband is the you don't know him. That man is the devil. <laughs> I told her, as long as you think the man is the devil, you will have the devil. You must begin to command and transform the man. Bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you bring every thought. To the obedience of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says what? It says, one, let's read together. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Another version says when your obedience is complete. And having in readiness to? Can you put New King James? New King James. Let's read together. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So listen. How do you punish all disobedience? Because Satan is the, is the leader and the architect of disobedience. How do you deal with the devil? You must deal with your own obedience. It means there are things in your life that must be corrected for you to be able to stand before the devil. Or else he will laugh at you. Or else he will see himself in you. That's why Jesus shouted and said, the devil comes, but he found nothing in me. 
So in real Christianity, always ask yourself, is there anything in me that represents the devil? Because if it is there, you have no authority over the devil. And even in deliverance, your obedience must be complete to cast him out. That's why we tell people to repent. I was ministering to a sister. And the sister told me, we're casting out the various demons. The demons were coming out until we got to the demon of violence. And they were having serious problems in their marriage. And this sister used to beat up the husband with shoes. <laughs> You're looking at it. This person is not here, please. <laughs> Does he exist here? Hallelujah. Somewhere in one country. But I'm saying honestly, the person is not here. So, he used to beat. He used to fight. And a strange power would come over that lady. So when we came to the demons of violence, that caused her to beat the husband. to come. She told me, stop, stop, stop. I don't want this demon out. Yes. She told me clearly. I said, what? I said, why? She said, because I will be powerless before that man. So you know a power? He said, yes, I know a power. Comes, he, could, he can do nothing when that power comes upon me. I said, wow. So you know you are cooperating with demonic spirit. Demonic spirit. I said, the deliverance end here. If the Bible says, whosoever keep the whole law and middle in one is guilty of all. I cannot go on with any deliverance now. Since you want violence to stay, death will stay. Adultery will stay. Every other demon will stay. We enter the deliverance. She said, no. They'd rather stay. The deliverance ended. I was shocked. And you know what happened? The whole thing ended in a divorce because they were caught in horrible fighting. The boss had to call the police. And the police came and the rest is history. So we are saying, if you don't deal with the demons, the demons will deal with you. They, they are never your friends. They are never your friends. They are never your friends. Even if they help you to, to, they help you to sin, they are never your friends. They are the enemies of God and they are enemies of the children of God. Never cooperate with a demon. Even apparent excitement or pleasure that demons give you does not help you one bit. They are there for your ultimate destruction. There is no good demon. I repeat, there is no good demon. Don't just say this demon is just a nice one. Helps me to defend myself. Witchcraft. He will finally kill you and will finally bring all your friends. One day you think you will defend yourself, but you will touch the wrong person. So it is very crit critical you understand. You are not dealing with somebody who has mercy. You are dealing with the powers of darkness who wish you harm. You don't know how much they hate you. They have nothing good, no good intention in their heart for you. So never. Remember? Somebody was saying, tell me, pray. He said, I was praying. I said, Satan, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. No, no, no. He said, leave me alone and I will leave you alone. He said, he came to an agreement with the devil. <laughs> Look at I looked at her and said, listen. Listen. You are dealing with a contract breaker. If you could break his contract with the living God, who are you? Agreement with a contract breaker. The father of all liars. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just wasting your time. He never left you alone. Something in your mind fell as though you have been left alone. It's a lie. 
Amen. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, no agreement with the devil. In Jesus' name. Amen. So you must be ready to punish all disobedience. All disobedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the battle is in the mind. Say with me, the battle is in the mind. Amen. Let's see how the devil sinned. It all began in his mind. In Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 17. Let's go to Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 17. If you are there. Let's read one, two, three, go. How are you falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground. You weaken the nations. And this is the description of Lucifer. You, you understand? The description of the person, the ancient enemy of man. And the enemy of God. This ancient enemy is described here as falling from heaven. Son of the morning, he says, how are you cut down to the ground? Who, who, you, you will weaken the nations. Let me tell you, Satan has two plans for mankind. And they are always working together. Number one for man is to make sure you never get to heaven. You don't get saved. To make sure you remain an unbeliever. All of demons have worked to make sure men stay as unbelievers. The moment you are saved... The plan switch and change. His second aim is to make you an, as, as ineffective Christian as possible. To make sure that you never become the Christian you are called to be. To make sure life becomes tough for you. You are constantly fighting thought, moving from one battle after the other. So that you don't become the woman or the man God called you to be. So the battle of Lucifer is twofold. Number one, make sure you never believe. If he fails in that, number two, he is there to weaken you. To make life difficult. To make you serve God groaning. To make you go to heaven crying. To make the battle so fierce and tense. And let me tell you, he's a formidable enemy. Because he is bent on wickedness. As the word wicked, he is literal wicked. So he's doing everything to make sure you can never negotiate with the devil. That's why I am so always disturbed when Christians take side with demonic things. Whether it's being done by Democrat or Republican, is Satan at war grown? Never support a political party that supports evil. Because there is nothing good in Lucifer. There's nothing good there. He never gives you anything good. What he gives, he pretends to give. He's looking for your votes. He's looking for your approval. Satan is evil. So, the goal is to weaken. See with me, weaken. And therefore, he comes first. He knows where the battle is, is in the mind. Because he can get you to do anything as long as he wins that battle in your mind. If he can successfully tell you things and you accept them, you will do them. Are you getting it? And one of the easiest way I tell people, let me say this to all of you. One of the easiest ways Satan capture people is to take you from among the believers. Never miss church for any reason. Satan has started working in you. I don't come here because I want to preach. I come here because I need it. Even if I, don't, I told my wife, if I, even if I'm sick, they're carrying me to the hospital. Bring me to church. Let me die in church. I said, I want to be there. I want to be in, in the midst of gospel. That's why I never travel on a Sunday and miss church. Even if I find the cheapest flight. And they are good at the, on Sundays. I tell my flight agent, if it's not in the evening, forget it. I'm not lying. He said, but it is cheap. It is a thousand dollar cheap. 
But I say it's a thousand dollar cost for me to miss church. It's not happening. So I'm saying, because God, you will account for every Sunday you were not there when you stand before God. God gives you all, all, all the time, all the minutes. He is asking for three hours. You will not give it to him. That's why the Bible says, he, when you sin willfully. What does the Bible say? When you sin willfully. Do not forsake the assemblies of ourselves together. Are you getting that? Can you put that verse on? In Hebrews. Do not forsake. Hebrews 10. Do not forsake the assemblies of ourselves together. As some do. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Verse, verse 36 says what? I mean 20, 26. It says, For if we sin, we fully. It's talking about what? Forsaking of the assembly together. It's a willful sin. It's an act of your will. For if we sin, we fully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there, is, there, there no more longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Why? Satan knows if he can only separate you, he will kill you. But sliding begins when people stop. Let me share a story with you. You know, a man, Kenehagen once had a vision where he saw a woman, and it was an open vision as I'm seeing you. He saw a woman that was being cast into hellfire. And, and he was seeing the vision about the woman. She was a very pretty lady married to a wonderful evangelist. And this evangelist was preaching the gospel. So this lady was with this, always going about with, with this evangelist. But the first thing she did... When the devil came and spoke to this lady, because the lady, the demon stood at the, at the shoulder. Most of the things you hear are not you. They are, is, they are being whispered to you by Satan. That's why you must bring the thought captive. Are you getting it? You don't capt captivate yourself. You capture the devil. Amen? You are capturing thoughts that are from Satan. So the demon stood there. The woman did not see the demon, but Kenahagin saw the demon in the vision. The woman just thought it is her thought. The, first thing, the demon whispered, you are very beautiful. You are wasting time in that church. Why do you have to go to that church? You are such a pretty girl. You could have the best of life. You go to that church and waste your time. And you are wasting your time going there. You could just go out and enjoy. You will be the top class lady of your society. And she was a singer. Yes, she knows the story. And then... What happened? She rebuked the demon. And she said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. And that rebuke the thought. I rebuke the... She not knew it was a demon. Just a Greek. Now the thought in Jesus. The, the demon make you and run. <laughs> then, after some time, one or two months, the demon came back. Stood. Came back two of them. One was whispering on the other side. The other one was whispering on the other side. Don't you think you're wasting time in that church? You could have been singing for the world. With the voice you have and the beauty you have, you will be stunning. You will shake the nations. But the church is covering your talent. You are wasting time. The devil spoke. And she was enjoying the discussion. And she did not rebuke. She thought it was her thought. She accepted it. She accepted the voice of Lucifer as her voice. And you know what happened? As I told you, the battle is where? The mind. The mind. And then, she stayed. Do you know the first thing she did? 
she stopped going to the prayer meetings. Because prayer is where things are dealt with. She stopped going to the prayer meetings. She does not want anything to do with prayer. Then soon, she stopped going to church altogether. Deadly, she divorced from the husband. Then she was moving from one man after the other, one man after the other one, one man after the other. And then, at the end, a man of God came to preach to her. And it is said that it, she came to a point where because she was constantly being convicted, even when you backslide, when you backslide, the, the Lord does not leave you. There's always that conviction. She was constantly being convicted, being told what you are doing is wrong, what they are doing is wrong. She came to a point where she shouted and asked the Holy Spirit to leave her alone. She turned. And a man, God sent a man to come and preach to her. She was in the hotel. And she opened the door and closed the door and blasphemed. And the Lord shook and again. She will spend eternity in the lake of fire. And the Lord said, If she slept with a thousand men, she came to me. I was still forgiving her. He said, But she has sinned against the Holy Spirit. And she has turned her back from me. There is no way. Do Kenahagin don't pray for her. Kenahagin has to ask the Lord. You have to show me in the Bible. Because this case. The Lord said. There are many things. I've read the Bible. I've read the New Testament 150 times at least. The Lord said there are many things there that you don't know. <laughs> it humbled him. He said go to this verse in John. If you see a brother committing a sin, you pray for him. But there is a sin unto death. I do not say you should pray for. No prayer will change this one. But understand the battle began where? And it led where to hell. To God, your mind is reality. Are you getting it? Tell your neighbor, give a statement to your neighbor. Your mind is reality. That's what the Bible says. Whosoever looked at the woman and lost after the woman has committed adultery. How? Because to God, the mind is reality. Are you getting it? The sin committed in the mind is considered action. Therefore, capture the sin before it captures you. Then you never capture the sin before it captures you. Now let's go back to what happened to Lucifer. Isaiah 14, 12 to 17. If you are there, we shall conclude there. It says, well, let's go. How you are falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You will weaken the nations. Continue. For you have said in your heart. He said where? You are getting it. Other versions say in your mind. It begins where? How did sin and rebellion began? The devil imagined himself greater than God. And it led to Satan. It led to Lucifer, the mighty angel, becoming the worst of devils. Are you getting it? The rebellion was not a physical thing. It, it was in the mind. You're getting it? It was in the mind that the war started. The physical rebellion came later when in Jamaica had to kick them out of heaven. 
but he was in the mind. And he went about, because when rebellion is born, you can always find rebels to back you. <laughs> Are you getting it? Nothing spread like rebellion. Because nothing talks of Lucifer himself like rebellion. It's so easy to, spre- to, to, sp- to, to, to spread rebellion. One person stand up there rebelling, he will have a following. Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why don't listen to rebellious statements because you will soon become a rebel. America shall be saved. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. You are, when you take God's side, you are not a rebel. You understand? That's different. We're talking about rebellious statement of being a rebel. In your heart, you just hate authority. You can't stand police. That's rebellious spirit. When I see them there, I thank God for them. And I bless God for them. I thank God that they are there. Hallelujah. I was going there to to get, I um, wanted to get uh, Anna's uh, birth certificate. I went to the health department to get the health, the birth certificate. As I got there, a policeman was standing there. I was just so happy he's there. Yeah. I said, Lord, I love these people. This man doesn't know how much I love him. I pray for them. Yeah. Amen. I just found myself just loving the guy. I said, this guy, policeman, God bless you. I almost told him, we have one in our church. He's a nice guy. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, we have one in our church. He's a nice guy. They call him Daniel. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm saying, rebellion is in the heart. When you start, it begins by that statement. Who is he to tell me what to do? Are you getting it? Is inside. Who is he to demand this? Who do you think you are? That's how he manifests. The humble spirit doesn't act that way. Amen? So he began, he began in the heart. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne. These are all imaginations. Are you getting it? He was imagining himself being like God. It began their imagination. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. On the farthest side of the north. Wow. He was describing the throne. But some of you who have gone to heaven said, It is as though the throne is on the north. Are you getting it? And everyone can from, from heaven can see the throne. The, the, because the throne, God is so big. God is not small. When Jesus comes out, he looks small like you and I. But God is huge. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is huge. Mighty. Congregation of the father's side of the north. He continues. This is all imagination. I will ascend. Let's read it. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Like. Sin began with wealth. Imagination. The mind. Win the war in your imagination. You win the physical war. Today, God is revealing to you a secret. And it's the secret of faith. You must begin to see yourself healed. Amen. Amen. I read about the book of a man. A man that has had his 41 dead race now. Wamak. You heard of him? You know what he said? For Andrew Wamak. For 11 years, 
no sorry for 13 years he began to see himself raise the dead he will proclaim i am raising the dead he would dream himself raising the dead he will go and do a mock raising of the dead in his mind he be, because he saw and discovered the importance of imagination he knew that what you imagine you do and he imagined himself raising the dead and then the first death that happened was his own son that already put a mark on the leg of the son put the son in the mock you know he went to the mock and they opened it for him the son was lying there dead body red And the command, he commanded life to come. And, and, and as they prayed, life came back into the sun. The sun started coughing and the sun got up. Amen. But it happened where? First in his imagination. <laughs> Glory be to God. He said for 13 years he saw himself raising the dead and proclaiming, I am a dead raiser, I am a demon chaser. Whatever, wherever I go, I raise the dead, I cast out demons, I heal the sick. And he began seeing himself that way and things began happening. Hallelujah. The miracles began happening in his life. He said he began to look at his finances also. He said he was so poor that his Bible was half-half. He used to uh, use something to... Take the Bible and put them in place. <laughs> he was extremely poor. He and his wife were known as the poor of the poor. He said, the Lord told him, just as you are healing the sick now, imagine yourself rich. Get out of the poverty imagination. He began imagining millions into his account. He began imagining. He said, now he doesn't know what to do with the money. So we are saying imagination is reality. Everything you see was a dream. You, you know this wonderful phone owned by my beloved Dr. Ray. Know this phone? Are you seeing it? It was Steve Jobs' imagination and his friends. Today, Apple is the richest in company the most how do they call it publicly traded company on earth it's not the richest man because the richest man is elon musk we are talking about company what he imagined what i wish it would be one of our tech guy here, either Brother Paul Kemper or our youth pastor Golo, one of them, and Brother Paul, I pray you people imagine this type of thing too. Imagine it in Jesus' name. Produce that million. We need it to preach the gospel. When will the saint begin to imagine? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, when will you start? With your sanctified imagination. Amen. Amen. It begins in the mind. When you think something, you cannot move above what you think. That's how life has made it. When you think you cannot climb that hill. I remember... There was a, some, a, a movie we were watching, and the man was putting into the, uh, the, the somebody they imagine, uh, 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 just putting into the man's mind, uh, putting in, in his imagination that he could, he could do it, he could go over. And he was struggling, he was tired. And the man started speaking. You see, you see, picture yourself over. You can go over. There's strength inside of you. You may not see it, but that strength is coming. The man turned and looked, and then began running and climbed. The battle was won where? Yeah. Once his head got it, his legs and ankle received strength. And he rose over. I'm telling you the battle is where in the mind. Oh, 
I destroy visions that have been killed and destroyed because of unbelief in Jesus' name. I destroy this wicked and plan of the enemy to kill the dreams of God's people. I release the people of God this day from your dreams that have been destroyed. And I say, you begin to dream again. You begin to see again. You begin to imagine again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. But he has to be sanctified imagination. Don't imagine yourself marrying another person's wife. It's sin. Even another person's fiance. Army is gone. No imagination can do it. Just forget. On the ninth, on the ninth, we are going to sell on the ninth of July. We are going to celebrate this wedding. Whether the devil likes it or not. Where is that your fiance? He went to he disappeared at the right time. I'm waiting for him. So I'm saying. Your imaginations must link with God. If anything is pure, anything is of good report, if anything is praiseworthy, think on these things. Let your imagination go on these things. The moment the devil put a thought in your mind against your brother, kill it because it will kill your prayer life immediately. As long as you have a problem with your sister or brother, you pray until you pray until your voice is gone. No prayer will be answered. You wonder why God doesn't answer you. You pray it is as though heavens are blocked. It's because of your attitude towards your brother or sister. I always tell people, you are not worth my relationship with Jesus. I will, I will release you as fast as I can. Karabaka Shanda. Brother Clement, understand this. Hallelujah. I release you as fast as I can in the name of Jesus. I don't spend my time there thinking, oh, what you did to me like that was horrible. And then I kneel there and I'm wasting my time. Kneel there and say, Father, I love you. The Lord is saying that love who? If you cannot love the man you see, how can you love the God you don't see? And God will say, this is hypocrite. You hypocrite, stand up. <laughs> Go and repent dear brother. <laughs> then come and tell me you love me. You must deal with relationship. It is so important to God. It blocks heaven from you connecting with heaven. That's what the Bible says. If you want to pray, you remember that your brother has something against you. What do you do? Put your gift. Put it at the altar. Go. Solve it before you come back. Amen. Amen. If they have not told you and you don't know anything, you are free. <laughs> are you getting it? Because people like finding fault. They'll look at you, they say he's working with God, but he has issue in this. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why, if it is not good, don't think it. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor your imagination. Your imagination is real. It's reality. Tell your neighbor it's reality. It's reality. Now let's conclude. Verse 15 says what? Let's read. One, two, three, go. Yet you shall be brought down to shore to the lowest depths of pit of the pit listen god is saying any imagination that is not holy will be judged are you getting it satan's imagination was not holy it was evil he wanted to rebel and overthrow god god judged the imagination Yet you shall be brought down to hell. To the lowest depths of the pit. So I'm telling you. If you allow the evil imagination. It will kill you. It will not only kill you. 
it can lead you to the lake of fire. Amen? So when your mind is being poisoned with something, don't take the Kool-Aid. Don't take it. Don't take the Kool-Aid. It's horrible. Refuse to drink it. Hallelujah. Refuse to drink it. You never enjoy anything. You never move ahead with negativity. I repeat, you never move ahead with negativity. I thank God my wife got delivered when we got married. My wife sometimes will come and tell me about five things that is wrong at the same time when we got married. Things have changed now. Hallelujah. Thank God for the microphone. Karaba Shanda Darabaka. I'm preparing uh, Steve and Almy. In Jesus' name. Steve has now shown up. <laughs> he was trying to run away. He fled. But I'm saying, who oh got married? Five things from one after two. two, 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 two. I said, A man cannot handle five things. He feels oppressed. To a man, it's oppression. He feels as to turn and flee for his life. <laughs> tell a man one thing. Don't plan and bring them. Say, I'll tell you a piece of my mind. Men don't go with pieces. They want whole mind. <laughs> one thing at a time. So my wife, two, 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 five. I said, my God. So I started using just the basic word. I tend to her, it shall be well. My God. My wife was angry. <laughs> I was helping her. Because I cannot de-handle those five things. And sometimes my beloved mother also does that. My mother called me and told me, this thing, this thing, this thing are bad. I said, mother, men don't deal with, I, even though I'm your son, we don't deal with those things. Tell me one thing at a time. Or else you, you feel as though I'm ignoring you. Since I could not handle the fight, I just said, it shall be well. My wife was shocked. One day she asked me, when I say it shall be well, she said, is, it, is that the only thing you have to say? It shall be well, it shall be well. I said, it shall be well with your five issues. <laughs> and she finally got revelation from heaven that this man cannot deal with five issues is oppression <laughs> he feels as to run for his life so he starts saying one thing at a time my wife is good at that now he may have other she may have other issues but she killed the temptation sometimes she'll tell me how other things i will not say now as i say to myself that is still part of you you are making me worry now Hallelujah. Because women fight that temptation because they are mad. They have a, what you call a mathe mathematic mind. Their mind is like a computer. They have everything fixed up and they can remember it even in the days of Abraham. They can remember what happened. <laughs> and they have it there and it's ready to pour. <laughs> so, and then you are praying for your soul. Father, may she stop. <laughs> so she says one now. And then we can handle that one thing. One. Amen? One. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that if you have the imagination of a woman, control it. In the name of Jesus. Because men's imagination is not like that. They deal with one thing at a time. Hallelujah. Somebody say box. You remember the teaching? Box. They deal with one thing. But if the woman, everything is connected connected it's electricity everything is connected what doesn't work with the children will not work in the at the job will not, everything is so connected the man is not like that leave the man alone if you are connected we are not connected <laughs> she said we have to connect you <laughs> oh lord have mercy 
So people of God, say with me, sanctified imagination. Your imagination must be sanctified must be holy you must think the good stuff don't imagine something that is seen god will not endorse it don't hear about the power of imagination today and you start thinking oh i will imagine to get this when it's not imagine it's sanctified you can imagine strange things <laughs> amen hallelujah the other one i was telling you was you don't imagine about steve he's gone now that he's come, I can say it. If you are sister, you were looking at Steve as he's singing here like Don like Don Wen. And he's singing here like Jimmy Swaggart. Whether you're online or whether you are here, don't say that brother can sing. I have a dream of he and I singing together. The woman of wisdom is looking at me, so you, 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 you. I have a dream. No, sorry. He will sing with Almi, not with you. Hallelujah. So kill that dream in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm using an example right in front of you so that you understand what I'm talking about. Your imagination to be backed by God must be godly. And therefore, every evil imagination must be rendered captive to obey Christ. You tell that imagination, obey Jesus at all costs in Jesus' name. A child of God should not just say anything goes. No, you are a child of a king. You have authority over your imagination and you can capture it for Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't just say anything goes because God loves you. And you have to obey him. To God be the glory. Amen. Because every evil imagination will be judged. It says, yet you shall be brought down to hell. Shall means hell to the lowest depths of the pit. Anybody who follows the devil is following the devil to hell. He has one place he's leading his people to hell. Are you getting it? There is no paradise for anyone who follows Satan. He has one path. Whether you are a wish, whether you are a wizard, I don't care who you are. Whether you are living in sexual immorality, fornication, adultery, and the rest. Whether it be, it be transgenderism and the rest, and killing of babies, abortion. Every act of following Satan leads to hell. He has no direction but hell. Because God has ordained it. That's where he's going. So he's carrying you there. Verse 16 says what? Let's read together. One, two, three, go. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms? No one has shaken kingdoms like Lucifer. Destroyed kingdoms, destroyed places. What is happening in Ukraine is Satan's work. The killing of people, the destruction of properties. When you see chaos, you see Lucifer at work. He's there to make sure that all things are destroyed. He's there to cause trouble. Is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who shook kingdoms? Finally, verse 17. Let's read together. We made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities. Who did not open the house of his prisoners? Put King James. Says, he does not easily let go his captives. It says, let's destroy. That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof. That opened not the house of his prisoners. Listen carefully. Who opened not the house of his prisoners? Now go back to New King James. Say when he opened not the house. Now he says here, who did not open the house of his prisoners? I want you to understand something. The enemy does not let go his captive. He opened not his the house of his captives. That is why 
Deliverance is the only way and the only language he hears. Because he has to be forced to let go. That's why you may be safe if you had the spirit of anger. It does not automatically go. Because Satan doesn't let go his captive. He must be forced to do it. Are you getting it? And his captives here represent something very important. This is so important. I want you to get it. Because sin is of the devil. Tell your neighbor, sin is the devil. And this will explain to you how demons come in. Every act of sin is an invasion into the calm of Lucifer. The Bible says, whosoever commits sin is of the devil. Say with me, of the devil. In the reality, that verse meant, whosoever commits sin becomes a captive of the devil. Are you getting it? Yeah. Or another word, belongs to the devil. Let me take the example. Let's say my wife books. My wife writes the book. I wish her book was here. Where's one of them? Okay. If you take my wife's book and you take it without permission, you go and sell it. Thank you. You go and print it in China. <laughs> and then you come to America, you start spreading it, selling it on Amazon. What will happen? What will happen? She will sue you for copyright. She will go after you. Lucifer has the copyright to evil. You touch it, you have touched his thing. And even God will respect Lucifer's right to evil. Are you getting it? Lucifer has the right to evil. Every sin, he is the founder of sin, he is the author of sin, he began it, he, is, he initiated it, he started it all. He is the founder of sin. So when you sin, you are inviting Lucifer's business into your life. You are taking his property and he gives no free lunch. When God tells you not to sin, he is not doing it for his sake. Your sin will not change him. He is holy. He is a holy God. Amen? And he remains holy. Your sin changes you. It gives you access, it gives your body access to the owner of that sin. When he sees, that's why I, I quoted this verse to you. When Jesus says, Satan comes, he has found nothing in me. Why? It means he has come, he, he can come and find something in you that belongs to him. Are you getting it? So therefore, deliverance is simply getting the devil out where access has been granted. Either by ancestral act or by your act. Are you getting it? This makes deliverance simple and easy to understand. So, he does not let go his captive. Once you are his captive, only one name can set you free. The name of Jesus. There is no other name given among men by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And for Jesus to set you free, Jesus had to die to pay for all that sin. That's why he did not just stay in heaven and say, I set you free. He had to suffer the consequence of sin. Be humiliated. Die the, the dead of shame and pain. So that you and I will be free. He has the legal authority to set captives free. He came to get us out of the prisoner. The prison of Lucifer. That's why at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. That name caused prison doors open. To God be the glory. So I don't care what prison you are involved with. I announce to you, the prison doors will be open in Jesus' name. 
Whether it was done by your ancestors, whether it was done by you, there's hope in Jesus. There's hope in Jesus. There's hope in Jesus. Hallelujah. That's why deliverance is possible. And deliverance, the easiest way to get delivered is humility. It's to acknowledge I need help. The one who believes he needs nothing. God doesn't deliver you from your friends. He delivers you from your enemies. As long as you cooperate with Lucifer as your friend, God will not set you free. He's coming to set you free from your enemies. Amen? Amen? So listen. Sin is captivity. Say with me, captivity. And anything that belongs to the enemy, he leaves his marks there. When you commit adultery, what happened is that to you it was a physical act, but in the spirit it was an act of invasion into the realm of Lucifer. And Lucifer looked. He said, wow, he has tried one of my gifts. And it comes with a price. I have access to your body now. Your head will be ringing adultery, adultery, adultery. And you will find yourself going after sin. And you will be wondering what is happening. Be be before the first act, there was a battle. The second act becomes as easy as good morning. You remember the story of this guy who killed someone. And it is said that the first time he struggled for six months to do his first murder. He went there many times and rushed back home. He could not do it with a gun. Finally, he went there and had in his heart, closed his conscience and shot the person. From that day, a demon of death entered him. The next person was like nothing. Why? The demon say, you have touched that which is mine. I will help you do it well. You have touched that which is mine and I will help you do it well. And from that day, he started going about killing people until he became... This interview was done when he was in prison. He explained why it happened. I was shocked. I was listening to it. The journalist was, was saying, hey, that's what happened. From that day, I said, wow! This guy doesn't know a demon entered him. He said, he said that day, Every remorse, every feeling for killing left me. He said, I could kill somebody and it means nothing to me. Why? The first time he did it and the spirit of murder entered him and he became a murderer. Don't go into the calm of Lucifer. You won't come back the same. He will make sure you are marked. And when you are marked, he will look for you. Because he comes and he sees something of his in you. Are you getting it? Did you, did, are you getting it? Did you get it? Okay. I want you to stand up and let's pray. Just gave you an introduction of some of the things we'll be sharing. What we are doing here is to prepare you for deliverance. Prepare you for ministry. Many will be set free. Demons who come out screaming. They have no choice. And for you to be set free, you must be willing with your whole being to be free. I want you to pray and tell the Lord. And I want to say, in the next few weeks, please, do everything to make sure you are in church. Satan will do everything for you not to come. Make sure you are there. Amen? All of you online who are living very far, Texas, make sure that it is not a week you miss because you'll be delivered right where you are. I want you to pray. Say, Father, any walk of the devil in my mind, in my thoughts, in my imagination, this day I command the casting down of every satanic every devilish imagination 
from, from today Lord I take God of my imagination I refuse to cooperate with Lucifer I refuse to accept the voice of Satan in the name of Jesus I build God around my imagination and I say Lord by your grace I will imagine sanctified things holy things in the name of Jesus I pray teach me Lord to treat my imaginations as real and as not a joke from today Lord I proclaim help me Lord to guard my heart to guard my thoughts and every evil thought may I bring it to the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus unveil to me Lord every plan of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus father expose I release my spirit my soul my body I say father expose every evil thoughts and granted Lord to be dealt with and from today may the enemy's plan be destroyed in my life in Jesus name in Jesus name raise your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost and just worship the Lord we release the fire of the Holy Spirit over this house and we say that which is of the devil shall burn in the name of Jesus every thought that is of the devil shall burn we release fire in Jesus name we give you the glory Lord we give you the glory Lord we give you the honor Lord you will be exalted you will be praised you will be glorified karabaka shoroko daraba shanda daraba rakadoro baka sharaka robaka daraba sharaka robaka roku rakadara baka sharaka robaka hallelujah 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 begin to give god the glory begin to give god the glory Hindo robaka sharaka robaka roko rakadara baka sharaka robaka sharaka rakadara baka sharaka doro baka sharaka we give you praise in jesus name amen you can sit down, please. Just as you can deal with the negative imagination, you can release the powerful positive imaginations. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want everyone, whether you have anything, the devil has been trying to stop you from going to the USA Prophetic Convention. Make sure that you deal with it in your imagination. Imagine yourself there. If you need $100, imagine the $100. Amen? Pay it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So do everything, everyone, because the battle is where? Imagination. Hallelujah. So I want everyone, all everyone here, make sure you register. Because I was shocked how many people have registered. Now, what, why are you waiting? You want to wait till the last moment as always? This time, repent. In the name of Jesus. And go ahead and register. Hallelujah. Because when you register, the other thing starts coming. Because registration is an act of faith. You are saying, I will be there. I must be there. Because we are hosting the event. None of us should not be there. All of us must be there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are the host. How can you host and you disappear? <laughs> you, <laughs> it, is, it is like Sister Tina inviting us to our home and she disappears. <laughs> Where is she? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you are the host. You cannot disappear. Is disrespect. <laughs> Tell your neighbor. Make sure you say it to your neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I like the way you are saying, Barry. You are saying it very well. <laughs> you cannot disappear. Hallelujah. It's disrespect. 
you have to be there. So everybody from today, please, before next Sunday, register. I want a hundred people registered by next Sunday. Amen. We have to get it done fast because we have to get this thing going because of the great thing. Remember, we are facing, we are going to the seat of power. We are going to where? Do you know how much you have been resisted for this conference? I've started praying for this conference very violently. We are no more going to get his back. It's different now. Amen? I like that, sister. It's the past. It's different now. We are going to a place of power. Amen. You must go with power. Amen? Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, have you, ask your neighbor, have you registered? I have registered. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So go back home today. Don't forget. Some people is just forgetting. They are planning, planning, planning. Don't plan. Do it. In Jesus' name. Bring it from imagination to action. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. I want you to know that God loves you. Anybody traveling to Cameroon, let us know. We have to put your name in the invitation so that we plan the trip. Amen? Because we have to have an invitation from Cameroon. Let us know. But it's so important that we do that. But the most important meeting of our present situation and our life is in Washington. That's more important than the Cameroon meeting. I insist. Amen? If you have to 